Welcome back to Pipes Etc. I'm glad you could stop by. This is episode number nine, and I will be conducting my third challenge. It will be a review of two Scottish blends. So grab your favorite beverage, perhaps a Scotch whiskey. And if you have either one or both these blends, light them up. And then later, we can compare notes. For this third challenge, I'll be putting my favorite Scottish blend, Dunhill the Aperitif, up against the challenger, Rattray's Black Mallory. And I've been smoking the Aperitif for a number of years now, and it is in the top five blends of my regular rotation. But now that I have to find a replacement because I'm not sure about Dunhill, what I like to find as a replacement is a blend that is as well balanced in these flavors but having a bit more body. Having this balance of flavors while adding more body, that will be the tricky part. Well, we'll start with a brief description of each of these blends, and I'll start with uh, Dunhill, and this is how they describe it. A complex blend of Virginia's, Cavendish, Latakia, and Oriental Leaf. The name Aperitif suggests this well-balanced, medium mixture should be enjoyed prior to to dinner. Interesting. As you can see, it comes in a 50 gram round tin. Unfortunately, no larger tins or bulk are available. That's kind of a drawback. Uh, and as usual, Dunhill, it's, um, it's offered in a their typical, as they say, the ribbon cut. So let's take a look inside of the tin. I've had this one open for a while. The mixture consists of dark, almost black pieces with a few that are dark reddish brown, some medium brown, and a few, very few lighter ones. It's cut in a, what I say, a not so typical Dunhill it's, uh, cut. It's, it's more like ribbons with some, I don't know, chunks. Usually it's a, it's a tad moist, but not too bad. This one's been open for a few days, um, and it's, it's still about right. Tin note. Mm. Yeah. Initially, the aperitif has a mild, sweet, smoky aroma, but it's followed up by a, yeah, that nice sourness. And it all really comes together as a delightful, earthy aroma. Mm. Not overly smoky, not overly sweet. Actually, very pleasant. Okay, let's move on to the challenger, Rattray's Black Mallory. And here's how Rattray's describes this blend. The basic tobaccos are broadly akin to those of red rapparee. Carefully apportioning of the quantities of seasoning leaf brings about a dark, full-bodied mixture, a notable tobacco. Interesting. All right. In packaging, Black Mallory comes in a 50-gram tin, as well as a 100-gram, what I looks like a little many Pringles can and it can also be purchased in bulk a huge plus for me this is also a blend of black Cavendish Latakia Oriental and Virginia in the description it's they have it as a heavier companion to red wrappery which is you know they're essentially the same but what I understood what they're trying to mean is they're the same tobaccos used but the ratios of each of the component tobaccos differs. The result is that Black Mallory is a bit of a heavier and richer smoke. And I hope that's true. Okay, let's let's take a look at it. Of course, I always open it up a little early. Oh. At first glance, they're mostly dark and medium brown pieces. 
Um, then there's quite a few of these thin gold ribbons. Interesting. Moisture is about right. Just a maybe a tad moist for the tin note. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. The first thing I notice is a light but distinct aroma of sweet smoke. Then there's a sourness. Similar to like sourdough bread. You have to work at it. But you can pick up some subtle notes of a, a fruitiness like stewed apricots kind of thing. Very interesting. Very interesting. But now the best part. It's time for me to put the Challenger Black Mallory to the test. For this review, I'm going to use my Savinelli's Bing's favorite. Everybody's familiar with these. Great smoking pipe. And so for the next few days, I'm going to compare these two blends. And in the following segment, I'll share with you my thoughts. Now, on to the tasting. Okay, now that I've had a few days to get acquainted with Black Mallory and compare it to the aperitif, I'll share with you my thoughts. But first, today I am pairing them both with a Scotch whiskey from Islay, Buna Hobbins 12-year-old, an unchill filtered whiskey bottled at 46.3%, almost ideal. It is quite pleasant and approachable and not overwhelming with heavy smoke like some other Islay whiskeys can be. Soft peat smoke, but a noticeable sweet and fruity aroma like lingonberry jam. It also has a somewhat sour and tart, but not sharp smell. Mm. Again, a gentle peat smokiness with a fruitiness, a little more intense now, like more like black currant. A bit of a nutty and vanilla flavor that I presume comes from the casks it was aged in. The finish is somewhat short with a combination of the flavors mentioned, but with a bit of a an interesting briny aftertaste. But hey, I'm sold. That's very good. Okay, let's quickly review my old standard, the aperitif. To me, this is a blend. It's a bit past medium in body and, and strength. The smokiness of the Latakia is not at all overwhelming, but nor is it subdued. But rather, it finds its place in the balance of flavors. The Orientals have a bit more of an influence, bringing a subtle sourness to it. But I believe this helps keep the Latakia influence in a better proportion. The Virginias play a background role here in providing the sweet but earthy type of flavor. The Black Cavendish is noticeable but not overwhelmingly sweet or having a vanilla influence. I do like the addition of Black Cavendish in the blend. Many times I just don't. To me, it smokes evenly and cool, dry, no harshness. I always describe the room note as pleasing. I've always enjoyed this blend, no matter what season or what time of the day it is. And the reason is that it, it just suits me when I want a fairly easygoing but satisfying smoke. You know, something different than the Virginias. The sweet, smoky flavor with a little bit of sour it's really well balanced it does lean toward an all-day smoke profile but it's not overly mild like what one would expect from most all-day blends it's really quite good okay now to black mallory we like this mm. 
To me, this is it leans more towards a more full-bodied, medium-strength blend. The Latakia is quite noticeable, but not near a lap bomb level. It has more of the heavy, leathery overtones that you know you always hear so often being described for the Latakias. The Black Cavendish is certainly pre present, but without the intrusive sweetness that most aromatics offer. Hmm. The Virginias add the depth one would expect but without that concentrated sweetness that may you know, be bring to other blends. Here they're more mellow, like one would expect from an aged tobacco. Maybe this is where the sp spiciness comes from. See, as you progress down the bowl, I pick up more of that spiciness. At first, I presumed it, come, it came from the Orientals, but... Maybe it is the Virginias. It's a bit sweet, smoky, does have that spiciness, but all these flavors do fit together very nice around the smokiness. It smoke cool, dry, burns well. Only a few relights, especially if you're not talking. I would describe the Rue Note, though, as lively. It certainly is a more Latakia forward blend, but not one-dimensional. For that matter, it's not overly complex, but it's balanced enough to allow those sweet and spicy flavors to also kind of peek through. Without reading much more than a general description of Black Mallory, I had the initial idea that it was a more medium to full strength, medium body blend. But Black Mallory is even a bit smokier and a bit more robust than I first expected. So with everything considered, which one came out on top? On the Pipes Etc. rating scale, I rate Dunhill the aperitif as distinguished. No surprise there. On the Pipes Etc. rating scale, I rate Black Mallory as also distinguished. No. So it seems we have a tie. Both are excellent quality blends that I would I'd recommend them both. Black Mallory does have more in tin size offerings and the option to buy in bulks. So, you know, that's a that's a big plus for me. As for the aperitif, it's only in the 50 gram tin and it has a questionable future. But when I consider everything I I have to fall back on my expectations, which are for a Scottish blend to be an approachable any time of the day or any season blend. It's my personal preference. I want the sweet, sour, and smoky components to be well-balanced as well. What I am looking forward here is to, buy, uh, to find something with a little bit more body. So with that considered, no Black Mallory doesn't do it. It has more body and has more smokiness, but it's somewhat out of balance with my expectations. As good as it is, Black Mallory just didn't have the subtle nuances that the aperitif does. Nevertheless, I will certainly continue to enjoy this tin of Black Mallory and very well may consider it as a challenger to another, uh, another category, the Latakia forward blend category. You know, and had I known Black Mallory is a bit more smokier than I now know, I might have suggested pairing it with the 16-year-old um, Lagavulin instead. Nonetheless, the Buna Haben wasn't completely dominated by Black Mallory, or vice versa. And in regards to the aperitif, I always felt it as a somewhat misunderstood blend. First, few seem to agree on what actually is a Scottish blend. And to confuse the matters more, on the tin it states, a pronounced smoke delivering a robust taste for smoking later in the day. I wouldn't characterize this blend as robust, nor would I say it is a blend better suited for the evening, like their nightcap. If it were, then why would they call it the aperitif? You know, a, 
a drink usually served before a meal. Anyway, I feel it is a perfectly balanced, good quality blend that can be enjoyed any time of the day. And that's why I enjoy it so much. If you haven't tried it, I believe you should. I hope it stays around, but we will see what the future tells us about Dunhill. As for the next episode, number 10, it will be a discussion on how I categorize the tobacco blends. and Hopefully then you will see the logic behind how these challenges are categorized. As for the next of these challenges, it will be in the Virginia Perique category. I'll be putting Salim's Counselor 1695 up against my standard, GLP's Telegraph Hill. So stay tuned for that challenge in episode number 11. Also, I posted the intro for Backroads, etc. If you're interested in outdoor activities such as hunting, fishing, camping, etc., then drop by Backroads, etc., and check out my somewhat unique way of addressing these topics. Well, that's all for this ninth episode of Pipes, etc. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you have the opportunity, please join in and add to the conversation by adding your comments. Thank you for stopping by Pipes, etc. And I hope you will again. Until then, good day. Mm-hmm.